while I'm holding out a bit to see if any unrealized cards potentially see print before jumping into the next hero video from start to finish, I've decided to take a look at another series of cards from the GX manga I've always enjoyed, the Legendary Planet series. The cards were created by the central villain of the manga, which I won't spoil for you here since I actually really enjoy that manga despite its problems. They were essentially the main MacGuffin cards used to drive the plot forward, much like the Egyptian gods, signer dragons, numbers, and so on. Though their competitive history has left a lot to be desired, especially considering most of them took a very long time to come out. So. Just for a little bit of fun, let's take a look at the Legendary Planets. Huh? This is basically just a knockoff version of Rado's Signer Dragon video, and the rest of my hero videos are just a low-rent version of Archetype Archive despite my passion for the subject matter, therefore making my entire channel pointless? <laughs> Showed him. The Tripper Mercury is a level 8 water aqua monster with 2000 attack and defense, and its effect reads, when this card is tribute summoned, you can change all monsters on the field to face up attack position. You can tribute 3 monsters to tribute summon, but not set this card. While this card is on the field, all monsters your opponent controls lose attack equal to their original attack. This card can make a second attack during each battle phase. Honestly, this is a decently strong start given this thing's manga effect. Making its attack drain a continuous effect and giving it an inherent double attack is appreciated. Not much by the standard of anything past, say, Beast King Barbaros, or even, you know, Guilford the Lightning, but being released a decade late is kind of an unfortunate running theme for these monsters. Splendid Venus is a level 8 light fairy monster with 2800 attack and 2400 defense. All non-fairy monsters lose 500 attack and defense. The activation and effects of spell and traps you control cannot be negated. The only one of the two planet cards that breaks the naming convention, and the one of the two that made the least sense to do so, thanks TCG. As far as the effects go, it's pretty mediocre even for a monster released in 2008. The negation protection's kinda nice, but let's not forget these are all level 8 monsters with no inherent special summoning. The character who used this card also used Archlord Christia, so it really makes you wonder why this was so woefully underpowered by comparison. Elemental Hero Terra Firma is a level 8 Earth Warrior fusion monster that requires Elemental Hero's Ocean and Woodsman. He must be fusion summoned and cannot be special summoned by other ways. You can tribute one face-up Elemental Hero monster to have this card gain that monster's attack points until the end phase. Even when I try and put them off for a bit, heroes creep into my content one way or another. It is the curse I have to bear. Terra Firma also changes the naming convention in the TCG, but given that it makes it sound more like a hero monster, I'll allow it. As far as the planets go though, it's probably one of the better ones for being their only extra deck monster, giving it some versatility in summoning. As a hero monster, it's fairly average, but I'll cover him in greater detail in that regard down the line. So for now, I'll just say he's okay, as far as a planet monster goes. The Blazing Mars is a level 8 Fire Pyro monster with 2600 attack and 2200 defense. His effect reads, while this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can banish three other monsters from your graveyard to special summon it, but you can't special summon for the rest of that turn. During your main phase 1, you can send all other monsters you control to the graveyard to inflict 500 for each. You can only use each effect once per turn. You guys want volcanic support? Here's your volcanic support. Look, it's even played by Axel. This is what you want, right? Anyway, his summoning condition wouldn't be that bad, but you better make sure you plan on summoning nothing else that turn afterwards and get your plays out of the way first because Volcanic Doomfire's weird alien cousin has to remind everyone that he showed up late. This, Anaconda, or Dragoon? I wonder which one you'll want to go into more. His burn effect is limited to 2,000 damage, which isn't bad on other cards but you're not gonna want to go minus four with this rejected doom boss fight just for the sake of some damage. The Grand Jupiter is a level 8 Dark Warrior monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense. Once per turn, you can discard two cards and then equip a face-up monster your opponent controls to this card. This card gains the combined attack of all equipped monsters. Once per turn, you can target one monster equipped to this card and special summon it to your field. The Pseudo Plasma of the GX manga, right down to being used by its version of Aster in one duel. Comparing the two, Plasma is obviously the much better card for the inherent special summon alone, even with the three tribute cost. 
And Jupiter isn't helped by the fact that he requires you to go minus two from your hand just to get the same effect that's inherently there on Plasma. Sure, he can get more than one monster and accumulate attack points, even potentially steal a monster to your side of the field, but the cost is the real killer here. Stealing monsters during the end phase just isn't as good a bonus as a one-sided skill drain. Maybe if they made him into a hero card a la Terra Firma, he might have had a bit more use with the actual archetype behind him, but this is the GX manga, where logical card design goes to die. He does look cool, so he got that part of being an Aster boss monster right at least. The Big Saturn is a level 8 dark machine monster, and it cannot be special summoned from the hand or deck. Once per turn, you can discard one card and pay 1,000 life points. This card gains 1,000 attack until the end phase. Woo. When this card in your possession is destroyed by your opponent's card effect and sent to the graveyard, both players take damage equal to its attack in the graveyard. I don't think I have much to say about him, honestly. He's just... not that great, to put it bluntly. A thousand life points to gain a thousand in attack points wouldn't be bad on a level six monster from 2007, which this wasn't and isn't. If your opponent gets rid of them, they take some big burn damage, and so do you. Either way, that's not exactly the huge deterrent they probably thought it was. He's about as lame and one note as the character who played him. The Despair Uranus is a level 8 light rock monster with 2900 attack and 2300 defense. When this card is tribute summoned while you control no spell and trap cards, you can activate this effect. Your opponent declares either continuous spell or continuous trap, then you set one card of that type directly from your deck. This card gains 300 attack for each face up spell and trap you control. Face up cards in your spell and trap card zone cannot be destroyed by card effects. His effect is. weird. So he lets you set a continuous spell or a trap directly from the deck if you have no other spell and traps at all. Weird, but not necessarily unhelpful. Oh, but wait, only when you tribute summon him. Yeah, so that's not happening ever. He protects them too, at least, which is fine, but the attack gain doesn't feel all that threatening. I'm sure there's some obscure nonsense this thing combos with, if you can manage to turbo it out, but I don't think anyone cares enough to bother. The most despair thing about this Uranus is that he got the honor of being in the deck of the worst character in Yu-Gi-Oh history possibly ever? The Tyrant Neptune is a level 10 Water Reptile monster with zero attack and zero defense. He cannot be special summoned. You can tribute this card by tributing one monster. This card gains the total attack and defense of the monster tributed for its tribute summon. When this card is tributed, target one effect monster in the graveyard that was tributed for the tribute summon. This card's name becomes that target's name and it gains that target's effects. The ability to copy effects has always been pretty cool, but unfortunately very abusable, which is why the card is currently banned like all those other poor souls who've all suffered in the name of degenerate criminal chickens. If he wasn't banned, Neptune could be used to do some pretty neat stuff, honestly. Potentially stealing the effects of a hard-to-play Nomi monster with the wild monster appears and monarch support shenanigans. He's also got that anime raw effect of gaining his tribute's attack, which is nifty. Jamie had to be locked up, but them's the breaks when you're abusable. The Suppression Pluto is a level 8 Dark Fiend monster with 2600 attack and 2000 defense. Once per turn, you can declare one card name, look at your opponent's hand, and if they have the declared card in their hand, apply one of these effects. 1. Take control of one monster your opponent controls, or 2. Destroy one spell and trap your opponent controls, then you can set that card to your field. This guy feels like an alternate universe Toad that would have gotten released in 2006 or 7 and probably banned for it. Like with many of the other planets, this effect is decent, but it's held back by needing tributes. Maybe if this card released again way earlier on, this could have been a pretty threatening move, but in today's day and age, you're really not gonna go for this when again, Toad is a thing. Maybe this is why Pluto isn't allowed to be a real planet anymore. The final card is the Supremacy Sun, a level 10 Dark Fiend monster with 3,000 attack and defense. Cannot be special summoned except by its own effect. After this face-up card on the field is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, during the next standby phase of the next turn, you can discard a card to special summon it from the graveyard. This card is inspired by the Egyptian god Ra. The, the actual god, not his dragon in card form. I know it's weird that he's a dark fiend when he's, you know, the sun, but that's for plot relevant reasons, so don't worry about it. Sun isn't what I'd call an amazing monster by any stretch, but like with all the planet cards, might have actually been kind of playable had they come out back in the era they were meant for. 
His revival effect is a cool reference to the idea of a sunset and sunrise, and his design is at least pretty solid. As far as final boss monsters go, he at least nails it in the visual department. The Legendary Planets are a really interesting case study into the bizarre nature of the spin-off manga and the cards they create. Power Creep is a cruel mistress, and no cards know that better than main deck, high-level boss monsters with mediocre or non-existent special summoning conditions. Manga cards tend to either be accidentally really powerful or completely misunderstood the standards of the era they're released in. You can tell the thought process behind the planets were locked to a much different era than what most of them ultimately ended up being released for. The GX manga started in 2005, it didn't end until 2011, one of the longest running spin-off Yu-Gi-Oh manga to date. Zexel was already airing on TV by the time it finished. Hell, even Konami seemed to recognize they were taking their sweet time with them, and by 2016 just dumped the remaining ones into the game all at once, seemingly just to be done with it. The Planet series remains one of the coolest ideas brought forth by the GX manga. Monsters based on the solar system is a great concept for a series of cards, and they had a lot of potential within both the lore and the actual game. Remember, these came from the same manga that created Light and Darkness Dragon, the Omni Heroes, and a lot of the zombie engine, so they definitely weren't inherently doomed or anything. But outside of the one that's literally banned, most of their potential was spectacularly mishandled, and they ultimately went absolutely nowhere and were quickly forgotten. Like a lot of the stuff in the GX manga if I'm being honest, but that's a topic for another video. Oh well, I guess that's why we have agents.